Welcome back to the Analyst Zone and congratulations to FT Win, who are going to be your Season 2 Transatlantic Splatoon League champions. Uh, some fantastic play uh, and some challenges over the course of the season, but at the end of the day, they brought it through when it matters most. And we're actually about to sit down with a handful of players joining us in the analyst call. We'll be able to see them on screen in a moment. But joining us in the call are going to be Kyo and Bursty. Uh, so congratulations to you two on the win. How does it feel to uh, have this victory in your pockets as well? Honestly, I think we're both on like an adrenaline high. We Both of us really, really wanted to win this tournament. And yeah. we're super glad that like... We didn't just win it, we like won it pretty dominantly, only dropping a couple games. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It was uh, impressive to see. Obviously, you know, we were all like, okay, so yes, FT wins good. We know that. But Freeze also had some challenges today. And uh, so who knows how good that set actually was. But you guys did the exact same thing Starburst did to you in week six reversing the score line arguably when it probably matters more uh what are your thoughts in terms of that final match uh, how did it feel to play with Shaq again and take down that team honestly uh, you can go first all right honestly yeah. for me it feels really great to play with Shaq again because i think like everyone really knows like my style is like oh i'm just gonna qr i'm gonna rush and fight everyone and like out of all the frontliners I've played with, even in pickups in the Western scene, Shaq is the only one to match that like style correctly. Like he's, he feels like two um, two sides of the same coin. It's just the synergy is amazing with him. Yeah, like everyone at high level like trash talk Shaq, but like he's the worst player in FU and he doesn't do anything. He just spams missile, but like people don't really realize how much like he contributes to the game through like just like cohesion and stuff like helping biscuit and i get to where kyo is like deep in their spawn and comms and all different stuff that we've like built up over the few years we've been playing with them. so yeah it's just awesome to play with them again and especially great to their revenge on starburst yeah i mean i think it's something to be said for the longevity right of playing with the same roster consistently over just the sheer amount of what years is it at this point two years nearly that you've been playing together um and it really does show in the gameplay i mean we were talking about it on the analyst desk right between the cohesion all of the pieces just falling into place uh shack being there to be a little bit more of that supportive role when he needs to be as well uh was really fantastic to see uh flc i know you had a question for these two what was that yeah i got a couple um so firstly shack usually plays k shot and so mm -hmm. obviously he's been on cds for a lot of this you mentioned that uh there's a lot of uh, he's usually playing that kind of connecting role between what kyo's doing all the way up in the enemy spawn and getting uh you um uh, bursty and biscuit up to sort of help him out was that sort of what made the cds um the pick or was there something else at play there um so usually most comp ideas are like just based off of what I want to like pick, like I, I usually like um, what's the word? Make the comps or whatever. And we had a very long time struggling against double armored, and it was Shaq felt unable to fight two armors. I felt unable to fight two armors. I'm like fuck it. So then we both made the switch to like CDS and Tri, which are weapons that are very great versus armor, arguably way better in zones than you'd say shot and bucket are, because. The, the amount of paint they put out cds has insane amount of paint storm and uh the, like the one thing that i guess the criticism that we do take is people say oh shaq doesn't push and cds has been forcing him to do that more because it's, it's type of it's kind of like a loner weapon like it can go in take a lot of the attention distract and it's been really good in playing that yeah because uh we watched back our in the zone set versus Radiance, and a lot of the time they're just saying, watch out for the try, he's going to flank. Like, they know Kyo is going to flank almost 100% of the time, and putting Shock on CDS allows them to, like, be in that flanking role as well, which is kind of like a mix-up, because people don't really expect Shock to flank, but, you know, when he does flank, it usually works pretty well. 
All right. Um, so, Kyo, you mentioned that you usually... Um, <laughs> You usually sort of pick the weapon, pick your weapon first, then the rest of the team kind of falls in. So you picked K Rapid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Here's the explanation as to why I picked K Rapid. So when, when we go at the tournaments, we play Anchorless, we've played it forever. And there's just certain maps that we just have in our minds. Like if we play this map, we probably lose. And it's okay if we lose. We're going to try our best. And Albacore was one of those maps, and we destroyed Freeze that map. And then um, Humpback, we really rolled by Starburst and Scrims. Like, we got 100 0 every game on every yeah, weapon I played. And I was like, three times. Yeah. And I was like, team, do you trust me? One Scrim? And they were like, yeah. And then I was like, it's a lot K Rapid, and we just start winning. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know why it's working, but it is. <laughs> huh? All right. Yeah, well. in fairness, I, I, I was seeing. At least in at least in the humpback game, I was seeing it kind of fall into place towards the end. I was seeing like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, if you do that, all right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's. I guess that's that's it from me for the moment, though. I still think anything else. Anything oh else? yeah, no, I yeah, agree. <laughs> Hence the question. Rissa, Sendo, any other comments? Hmm, nothing. No. No, I, I don't know. Just want to say, like, well played. I mean, mm -hmm. of yeah. course, I guess people are almost expecting it at this point. You guys did it so many times, but it's still very impressive to see. And I don't know, like, I think after winning is the kind of team where I, as every player, you know, more than put in their role. So, I don't know. It's always really fun to watch. So, yeah, thanks mm -hmm. for playing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so always is. Hosting. Always is fun to watch. And again, Thank you all for playing, for putting on the show for us, and for entertaining the crowd. Uh, anything else you you two would like to shout out? I guess, Kyo, we'll start with you. Um, no, I don't think so. Not really. <laughs> Mercy? Uh, I recorded the our sets today, so I'll be uploading those on YouTube. Just The channel name is Bursty, and uh, you'll be able to see my perspective, the armor perspective. I mean, really, just the most riveting perspective of all of them, right? Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Of course. I'm sure we got a lot of that on uh, AutoCam, anyway, right? Like that's where I usually like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, yeah, uh, Kyochan DXD on every social platform imaginable: YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. I don't post on two of those, but uh, I'll try my best. Are you gonna say uh, LinkedIn too, like Shaq did? No, 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 not LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't want my employees. <laughs> All right. Well, once more, thank you both and congratulations for your victory here, taking it down over Starburst, reversing the scoreline of week six, uh, and becoming Tassel Season Two champions. Congratulations to the two of you and congrats to the rest of the team. Uh, now, folks, we are going to launch into the nor more normal analyst D desk stuff. And of course, plenty of highlights from the match to show you on. Uh, so, Sendo, reacting to that set from the FT win perspective, I mean, of course, gotta be happy with the victory here. Yeah, I mean, for, I mean, for sure, like, I think they did themselves, they were really happy with the win and for a good reason. I think they played how, like, the classic good after win plays that, like, of course, there were some, like, cracks there in the way, like, say, like, Sturz and Glamblitz, but overall, it was just so solid. And I think it's interesting, like, they talk about Shaq and you know what his role is in the with, with the team but for me like Shaq is always like part of like the ultimate after win lineup because i think he has like a really good understanding of what he needs to do for Kyo to shine i think in some teams i kind of like see two front lines kind of like almost uh, like uh fighting for the spotlight like they both both just are trying to always like beat each other in, in terms of kills maybe they don't it, but it kind of like looks like this it's not as coordinated that with, as with Shaq. He's not shy of like if he if he needs to back up to win the game he does it like not every front line is capable of doing that that's crazy to say that and yeah otherwise like I think games like Marco you just see like a really clean uh, like vertical line of after win pretty much in in the map from top down view and they're playing it really well and they always like on the enemy team like um, like taking two v ones where they can and when Gua's flanking it all looks like really uh, well made up like. It's really easy for the enemy to trip to those, and 
yeah, I think those are like my main thoughts. Like, really fun team to watch, yeah. obviously. No, absolutely. Always a fun team to watch. Of course, uh, FLC Star Wars came up a little bit short. And obviously, I think we started to see a little bit of like the adaptation that I was saying. But at the end of the day, I guess it just wasn't quite enough. Yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to because Star Wars, they weren't playing badly or anything like that. It wasn't as though they were not like they it's not as though they were playing off their game or anything like that i think ft win was just that good today um i, I think in the, the like we heard in the interview they said that they really wanted to win this and to, i'm sure starburst did too i mean starburst wanted uh, a sort of rematch with ft win from what i understand to sort of after the after the group stage match it was a 5-2 in their favor but it was like yeah, but you didn't have Shaq, so we want to get we want to get the real win. So I mean, they absolutely wanted it too. But like the the sheer presence from FT Win in that set uh, was incredible. Like they were doing everything that we would expect out of FT Win. Like Sender was saying, it was like watching. You know, you, you sort of describe the the best way of of FT Win playing. And that's what we saw. A lot of the time, FT win, like when they're in sort of usual sort of weekly tournaments, uh, they're a little bit, um, like they're not bad by any means, but they're sort of a little bit less focused perhaps. Um, like we saw Shaq just keeping up with, with the team super well, uh, keeping the team together. Biscuit and, um, and Bursty were, like Biscuit wasn't overextending, Kyo was doing these crazy flanks um but not getting like he wasn't forcing them either like he was actually making them work so i mean it's hard to fault starburst it's just that ft win was so good that i'm not even sure that starburst like even starburst best play throughout the entire uh series i don't even know if that would have been enough i actually think ft win was just that good today yeah and i i, I will say i mean obviously ft win played phenomenally uh, the one comment I think that you made at some point in our kind of uh, while the set was actually going on was something to the effect of, well, they just constantly get overwhelmed. It's always a 4v2 or something that affects because uh, FT win just playing this anchorless style, playing with always being aggressive, always in your face. Uh, it's really easy to always have the numbers advantage in some of these fights, especially if uh, one or two players even of Starburst is out of position on the back lines or uh, the like there. Um, Maybe we'll return to that thought in a little bit here, but uh, Riss, I wanted to turn to you to kind of wrap up here. FT wins uh, season summary as a whole, Starburst as well, um, you know, seeing as how you've been watching these teams for quite a while. Yeah, so having been able to watch both of the teams throughout this whole season, um, I think there's been, both of them have been kind of, you know, um, showing us all types of different things, um, different play styles. I mean, very similar to what they always do. But today, in particular, I think that it was a really good build up to this rematch from when these two teams played each other earlier on in the season. Um, and throughout the season, though, I mean, Starburst was able to beat FT Win, um, and you know, that was something that really, really was a, a focal point today as we came into this match. So I think that. Um, looking at that, I I think that it was just really a great comeback to be able to watch here with everyone. Yeah, I mean, it, it really was. Uh, I, I think we've kind of hit it here. Anyone else have any other closing thoughts on the playoffs or the league as a whole? Yeah, I mean, it's... You always love to see these um, sort of transatlantic... We, we, we've had tournaments like this before where it's like America versus Europe, but um, like it's there's something special about when we actually make it about America versus Europe. I think uh, you, you go to any any competitive game, I think it's the same same sort of thing. There's always that regional kind of rivalry. Of course, I'm speaking as an Australian here. I have no uh, <laughs> dog in this fight, but um, the uh, it's it, the, the amount of hype that we get out of these these matches, like the anticipation of Freeze going 20 and 3 in group stage, how is that going to translate over to fighting against these North American teams who every both Starburst and FT Win had insane, like 
crazy close sets against everyone in their region. So is Freeze going to, is Freeze just that good or is Europe not, we, we have all these questions and we actually get to sit down and, and really um, see how it's all playing out in one huge event so no it, it's incredible i mean i'm i'm so glad that uh this is this has happened and I and mean, even even with the sort of drama of the the second semi-finals but it, it's just a, a privilege to be able to, to watch this sort of um event take place i think there was an interesting point that you made about uh, like north america versus europe because that's kind of like the dynamic we had here right so the groups you're playing mostly the teams you're familiar with you're likely like practicing against them quite often since you know not top, at top level you only have so many teams you can practice against so you're rather familiar with those teams and then when you go into the playoffs i think you need like a different set of skills to really uh, like excel at the playoffs because you gotta be able to like of course after win is not like an unknown quantity like you kind of know like what you're getting but at the same time just due to how time zones work and so on you're probably not like playing them day in day out and same thing with other teams of course so that was kind of interesting to see how different teams like handle that sort of thing and how they're able to keep up that momentum uh, despite whatever happened in the groups. I mean, it should be the same thing if you drop a bunch of games in groups and then one tour if you swept, it's going to be a whole different story in the playoffs anyway. So that's my thinking here. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, Sendo, to wrap this whole thing up, I mean, ha you have to be happy with uh, how this season of Tassel turned out. Uh, and maybe the fact that we also finished the season of Tassel. Yeah, that's that's of course. I actually don't remember what happened in season <laughs> one. So that was in 2018. <laughs> so if someone asked me who won it, I would be uh, it would be some kind of a struggle to find I don't out. I think anyone but won it. I, I no one it, won it. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, people. Like I think it's that. Yeah, I think it's didn't play out. Like it was like super unlucky, and the teams kind of like all sort of things happened. So yeah, of course, like I said before the stream started it was kind of like a thing where i thought you know maybe it would be nice to have some kind of like competition like this between the top teams because there's a lot like a bunch of like really exciting teams that i, I saw myself uh, practicing like, screaming and so on that there was a bunch of opportunity to see like really hype matches so i was thinking like what would be a good format to really like bring this to the audience and then I thought, like maybe, like you know, reviving this. I, I mean, the reviving thing was more part because you only or already have like all the assets and stuff, so it's easy to pick it up. And that's kind of like my point here. Like I didn't really like expect it to get this big in a way because I just thought, like, okay, I'll just I'll just start it up, and then you know, I ask some people to stream it, and they'll stream it or they don't. I don't care. I'm just like playing. But in the same time, I think Espelot like, gave out like. Big shoutouts like this guy it really it really took it to the next level like i i for sure didn't expect it to get like this professional and the whole like you know the casting and the whole staff like i think everyone should be glad to have this kind of professional great people like working on this as their hobby like when you see it behind the scenes you just have a very different kind of appreciation to how it is holding game together and uh, i'm extremely happy about that yeah yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it's it's really has been a privilege. I mean, there are so many people to thank. Um, obviously, this is not a one person operation here. Um, for the broadcast today, Endgame TV specifically, Nitro putting together the entire graphics package, running production today, uh, all the fancy bells and whistles, this whole an analyst desk thing with the webcams and everything. Uh, major shout outs to him for making this stream today look so that much more professional, especially the replays. Uh, everything that you saw today uh, was 100% in Nitro's hands. Um, Sammy on social media and graphics at Endgame TV, original designer of the Tassel brand as well. Um, and yeah, all of the on-air talent that we've had, not only for playoffs today, but over the course of the league as well, has been a pleasure to work with. Um, but of course, there are two vitally critical people that I think are worth shouting out. For one, the teams for agreeing to this league in the first place. As you mentioned during the pre-show, Sendo, all these teams just kind of agreed um, to have this league happen. And uh, it really, it does take everyone uh, to be a part of it and to see it through to the end. So thank you so much to the teams for their support of the league, what we were doing, what we were trying to accomplish and for being cooperative along the way as well. Uh, and then lastly, thank you to all of you, the spectators for tuning in consistently, whether that was, you know, whether you were retweeting everything, whether you were uh, watching all of the Tassel streams during the regular season, or if you just tuned 
tuned in for today. We really much appreciate your support. This league is nowhere near as large as it is without your guys' support. And it's what drives all of us to continue coming together to put on the show for you. Uh, with all of that out of the way, I think that about does it for the end of the stream today. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Transatlantic Splatoon Leagues Season 2. We hope to see you all back in a future season or for future events, uh, not only hosted by Sendo, but also from us at Endgame TV. Uh, we are going to send you all over to the uh, Mario Kart Wii League Grand Finals that are happening right now. The league's gone on for nine months, so if you're interested in watching a little bit more Mario Kart Wii, stay tuned. We'll be hitting the raid button and sending you all over there. But for now, that'll do it for us here for the Transatlantic Splatoon League Season 2. Congratulations to FT Win, who are your champions this season, and we hope to see you all next time. Take care, everybody. <laughs>